Hello, this is another Squarespace DIY tutorial. This one is on how to uh, avoid spam using either Google Sheets or MailChimp in conjunction with a Squarespace contact form. So the first thing you'll need is you'll need your contact form. You can build that using the form block, which is right there. So notice default, it gives you name, address, subject, message usually. You want to add one more field in here called password. Um, it's kind of misnamed. It's not exactly what you think it was. It's not a password to get into your site or anything. This is a word that will be passed on to your Google Sheets or your MailChimp um, or even your regular email in order to help you filter spam. Uh, although it doesn't really work as a filter in regular email, it just lets you know that this person is a human and it's an actual message rather than the spam, but you still have to look through them all individually, which you won't have to do using the MailChimp or Google Sheets trick. So we'll do a password and we'll title it, are you human? You want to write um, what word you want someone to type um, to ensure that they're human because this isn't like a honeypot where a um, bot will fill it out and a human wouldn't. This is something that bots will fill out, but they'll fill in just random stuff, whereas humans will type the word that you put uh, in here. So. And it can be whatever you want, doesn't matter what it is. And you'll want to make it required. That way, uh, anybody who is trying to turn in your form is required to do this, required to prove that they're human. Otherwise, they'll get lumped in with your spam uh, when it comes to that. So that's your basic form. You can add whatever fields you want. You can put this field anywhere on the form that you want by dragging it around. Um, usually, the best spot is right down below somebody, or right down above where somebody submits. Uh, the next thing you'll want to do, and this does work on an advanced form with a light box or anything else. Um, the next important thing is you want to do either Google Docs or MailChimp. I'll show you Google Docs first. So on this one, you would um, connect your Google account. If you don't have a Google account, you can get one for free um, and use it just for the Docs or something like that. Squarespace would like to have offline access. Yes, you want that. That just means that it's going to populate the doc while you're not signed in. Um, and then you'll give the spreadsheet that the site will create a name. So we'll just go contact form. And save. And save your form. And then when you look at this in a new browser, and this would be like somebody uh, somebody filling the form out. So they come to your form. So they submitted the form. Um, notice you don't actually have to have a valid email address to submit the form. There is no validation of that kind on Squarespace, um, which is one of the reasons why this little trick comes in handy to help filter out bots that don't use valid email addresses. Um, they'll still have to type the word in order to do it, or in order to get past your filter. So now if we come to our Google Sheets, you'll notice there's a brand new one here um, that was just populated by Squarespace, and this will just start listing all of the submissions I get through that contact form. Um, it'll list when, who they are, what their email address is, subject message, and then are you human? 
in this case it is. Um, we're going to do another one real quick just to show you that even someone who's not human will go through. Notice it instantly updates, so some guy, random. So this field will be filled out, and how this works as a filter is you can set this field to either sort to see your thing, your um, everybody who's up there, or you can come over here to the little filter thing after you've highlighted that column, create new filter view. You can filter by this name, are you human, this range, um, and you'll filter by values. Sweet. Okay. should have oh there we go filter and we just want sweet so now if you leave this form like this and people just keep plugging in your uh, your contact form anybody who types that word will show up um, some of the downsides of this are people who mistype the word um, when they're trying to type and hit submit it will still be accepted but they won't pass this filter um, people who just ignore or, you know, think they're being funny and type something in there but are actually trying to contact you, they also won't pass this filter. So you can also see what else people are typing and if there's something that, you know, seems like it might be a human that you want to contact, you can include that in the filter as well um, and hit that. A lot of bots might just pass this by, so you could filter by who leaves that blank. Um, if they bypass that, it'll show all the bots. So there's different ways that you can filter it, but it'll at least help you cut down on your spam. Uh, it won't prevent it, but it will help you cut down. Thankfully, Squarespace, unless you have an extremely high traffic website or you're doing a porn website or something like that, uh, Squarespace is pretty good with the spam filters. I get a decent amount of traffic through my site, um, or at least I did before I started redesigning it. This is my site right now. That's all it is. Uh, but I was never really hit with a lot of spam. I also have a lot of clients who do Squarespace without any sort of filtering, and they also don't have many spam problems. But if you do, or if you want the ability to at least filter it, this is one of the methods. So the other method is MailChimp, and this is actually the way that I will be doing it um, from now on for my own site. And the reasons for that is MailChimp is free as long as you don't you know, have multi-thousands of emails in your list. Um, it's free up to a certain point, which I think it's like 10,000 per campaign or something like that. Um, it's a pretty high number. It's very, very easy to use, and then you can you know, send out a free email blast to anybody who is trying to contact you, any blog subscribers you have, pretty much anybody that has say, hey, I want to be part of the conversation. It's an easy way to reach them. It also works really well for filtering out spam with this um, form. So the first thing you'll do is sign up for a free MailChimp, campaign, or free MailChimp account. Um, they make it quite easy to create. Notice, don't be worried if after you create the account, you can't log in right away. They will send you an email. Sometimes it takes up to an hour while they create your dashboard before they send you that email, um, but they will send it. So once you're able to log into your account, you go to lists, and we will create list. Notice how easy it is. They make it really easy to go to the right spots on their site. They're very helpful in that way. Um, so you'll put list name. 
Um, this would be the email that anybody on this list when you send a campaign out, this is the email it comes from. Um, short reminder about how they got on your list, you could say. Um, the address information is something that MailChimp requires. That is something that you can remove from uh, your emails that you send out once you send them out. So just take note of that. You can also choose how uh, MailChimp notifies you when you get a subscriber. You can choose it one by one, when they subscribe, when they unsubscribe, or get a daily. Once you save it, so now you've got a list that doesn't have any subscribers on it. So you can add subscribers uh, either through whatever you're tracking your emails through right now or just manually typing them in. Um, and you can set this form to automatically add subscribers. In order to do that, you want to go to edit. We'll leave the form exactly the way it is right now, um, but go to storage. And instead of Google Docs, we're going to connect it to MailChimp. So it'll ask you to log in to MailChimp. Oops. Here's a, a shameless little plug for one of the best extensions that I've ever purchased. Uh, it's called 1Password. Basically, it stores all of your logins for anything you do online and remembers the sites that you did them on. So all you have to do is Tell it what you want to log into, and it usually fills it in. In this case, not so much. Oops. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's a pop-up that it didn't read, but. Usually it just fills it right in and you can log into anything. I never have to remember any password. Plus on the plus side, you can make your passwords much longer and much more secure because you don't have to remember them. Uh, it's called 1Password. I think they're on version 5. It's relatively inexpensive and definitely worth it. Uh, contact form is so you can have different lists for different forms on your page. We're going to send this one to contact form. And then once we do this, I'm going to fill this out again. And we'll just go with that same information. And we'll submit. And we'll say thank you. Um, so what that's going to do is, to my email, it's going to send a subscription confirmation. Um, saying, hey, you contacted this, are you sure you want to do that? Um, so if you're putting it into, Ma if you're using this form in conjunction with MailChimp, MailChimp, you might want to warn people that this will add them to your subscriber list. Um, you can let them know that they can contact you but opt out of the subscriber list and they can do that in the email that they answer. But I'm going to pause this video briefly while I answer that email. Okay, we're back. So once uh, your subscriber gets the email, says, yes, I subscribe, um, they will be put onto this list. Sometimes it takes a few minutes for it to repopulate. Um, I think this took about 10 or so before I got on here. But uh, basically once you... Uh, once you have somebody on this list, you can set up what's called segments, or once you have people on the list, and you can filter basically by anybody. You can say all or any is what you want, and we want to go, are you human, is, or even 
contains or is not. So you could say is not blank. Um, that'll give you every everything. Anybody that put any password in there, um, you could match your password, contains, whatever you wanted to set for a filter. Um, you can have multiple conditions if you want on it. So once you preview it, you can save it and auto update. That'll basically keep repopulating this segment um, rather than this one snapshot of it. So now you have a list with this segment of people who made it past your spam filter, which in this case is just me right now. But that's basically how you do a spam filter with MailChimp, and then you can send out a campaign that blasts just to this segment of your list and never have to worry about deleting your spam, or you could go through for, you could do a segment that's, are you human, is not, what people should have entered in there, preview, save, and so anybody who's on this list, now there's nobody on it, but you could basically highlight all of them and delete all your spam all at once in that one situation. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it.